Uh, hey guys. So in this video, oh, uh, I didn't even introduce myself. It's Aquarist here, and in this video, we're gonna be adding an anemone and a fairy ras to the seventy-five, and you know this is gonna be really fun. And I haven't done this in quite a while, so let's enjoy it. So first things first, we got the fairy ras, and it's kind of yellow now. Like when I bought it, it had like a white belly, but yeah, I don't know. I guess, I, I don't know, stress coloration or something like that. But yeah, it's beautiful ras. Got it for pretty cheap, and yeah, I like it. So, the next thing is the anemone, and you know, it doesn't really look that good right now, but trust me, it looked really good in the, you know, in the LFS tank, so yeah, let's get it going. All right, so first things first, is when you're adding an enemy to the tank, you want to turn off the power heads because when you have an enemy, it's basically free floating, and that is not a good thing to have like power heads going because you know the enemy is going to get caught up in a power head. I mean, most likely it will, and you know, that's just gonna make the tank turn into a milkshake. I mean, like. There's no other way to put it. I mean, it's going to be a, you know, specifically a vanilla milkshake. And, you know, we do not want that. So make sure to turn off all flow in your tank when you're adding in an enemy. And yeah, you just got to turn off the flow for like 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, the an enemy will probably attach by then, depending on how healthy it is. You know, if it's like a really healthy one, it'll attach immediately. If it's like a little bit raggedy and stuff like that, just give it some more time. But yeah, you just turn off the flow for 10, 15 minutes and yeah, the anemone is ready to go and let's get it in there. I mean, that's what you came here for, right? So yeah, let's get that anemone in there. Now, before oh y'all roast me in the oh, comments section, no, um, the UV sterilizer and the heater those are not their actual positions. Um, when I was trying to catch the Clark Eye Clownfish to give to the LFS, I kind of kicked them and like now they're dislodged. And yeah, you're just going to see a cut and then they're going to be in their right spot. But um, when I was catching the Clark Eye Clowns, um, it was not pretty. So, you know, it took me some time, but I finally caught them and I know you can see the algae on the glass and the algae on the power heads, um, mainly on the back part. Um, I just came back from college, so uh, I'm finally able to take care of this tank uh, on a regular basis. So yeah, that's just what happens when you go to college and you have a reef tank. But now that I'm here, uh, I can finally take care of the tank. So. Uh, yeah, you won't be seeing that, uh, you know, green algae on the back glass anytime soon. But yeah, let's get the anemones in. <laughs> let's get that anemone. And it's a little gushy, um, by the way. So whenever you try and get an anemone out, you're going to feel a little weird. Like, it kind of has a little, like, slimy... You know, like, I mean, obviously it's slimy, but it's like, I don't know. It's just a weird slimy nope. type of thing. So, yeah, let's get the anemone for the camera. There you go. Kind of looks like crap. But, yeah, that's what an anemone looks like out of water. And, yeah, it's really disgusting. So, let's get that in the water uh, while we're young and... Yeah, we just find a spot where we can have cover because anemones usually like cover. As you can see from the ones already in the tank, 
Um, they picked a spot where they can hide under the rocks uh, whenever they need to. So, yeah, the anemone is going to like a spot where it can, like, you know, uh, I guess close into a hole. And so it can be a little bit safer whenever it's in a danger or whenever it feels like it's in danger. So I kind of sp picked a spot where it's, like, near a hole. So then uh, that's usually where most of my new anemones go. Like whenever I added them in there. So that's always a good spot. Then they migrate to wherever they want to. But um, yeah. So now you can already see the anemone is getting used to the uh, tank. And it's starting to attach to the rock. Um, you don't really need to acclimate them. I mean, you can like temperature acclimate them. But like. You know, my LFS, we're running the same water, and, um, you know, anemones are pretty hardy, so uh, I just like to plop and drop them, and you don't really use coral dip or anything like that. Um, you just use, uh, you just plop it in the tank, and that's what's worked for me for a long time. So, yeah, you can see the anemone is starting to attach the rock, and... It's very important to keep the flow off when you're adding them because if I didn't have the flow off then it would have a much harder time attaching to the rocks and you'd probably see it like floating about so yeah make sure flows off and yeah we can see the anemone is slowly getting used to the aquarium so that's always good and oh got a close up so you can see it but yeah it's probably gonna take um a while for the anemone to actually uh you know like expand and grow and it's gonna be shriveled up for like probably a week or something like that but you know it's just getting used to the tank and um yeah hopefully it becomes like a centerpiece or something like that because it is a rainbow bubble tip so it's supposed to look pretty cool under uh, blue light. So, yeah. All right. Let's get the RAS in the tank. And for the RAS, we're going to do a standard drip acclimation because probably at the LFS, it comes from a lower salinity water because, um, you know, if they're not keeping corals in the tank, uh, why spend the extra money on salinity? So... Uh, let's get them in the bucket so then we can do standard drip acclimation for two hours or so and um, yeah I don't really have a quarantine tank for him at the moment because you know I haven't really bought any saltwater fish for a year now and you know this is the first saltwater fish I've ever bought in a while so I didn't really have a quarantine tank set up but I'm definitely going to set one up for the summer, um, just in case if I buy any more saltwater fish. But, you know, this fish was like the only fish in the tank. And, you know, he looked pretty healthy to me. So I'm just going to take the chance on him and try and add him to the tank. I wouldn't really recommend this uh, to other people because, you know, this is kind of a bad practice. But I have a UV sterilizer on the tank and, you know, if he was, if he was like in a tank packed with other fish and, uh, you know, he looked like super stressed and like kind of unhealthy, then I wouldn't really have bought him anyways in the first place. So that's kind of why I'm taking the chance. Um, well, what you're seeing right now is the airline hose with a knot on it and that's my acclimation contraption um, and all you gotta do is just put one end in the tank and you just got to suck the other end whenever you want to start the siphon and that'll help you acclimate the tank or acclimate the fish so you I mean I would recommend using a clip whenever you use the uh, acclimation contraption thing because if you don't use a clip um, you know like I did I used to not use a clip and 
like the for some reason the hose just like moved away from the bucket and then it just started dripping all over the floor and you know i obviously i'm not gonna sit around and wait for two hours for the fish to get acclimated like i'm gonna watch some tv or something like that so like i leave the room and then i come back and then i just see water like all over the floor and then you know it was just not fun to clean so now i use a clip so then i can actually like safely go away with the peace of mind and watch some tv or something like that um while the fish is getting acclimated so yeah i make sure to clip it on there just to uh you know let me watch tv in peace and not clean up a whole puddle uh on my floor so yeah let's wait for two hours and we're going to get that wrasse in there. All right, so now it's been about 15 minutes, and the anemone is stuck onto the rock, and uh, the tank is good to get flow back again. So yeah, um, once the anemone, you can see, is stuck to the rock, uh, it's safe to turn on the flow again, and um, yeah, it won't blow uh, into a power head and turn into a milkshake. So... Uh, yeah, make sure uh, the anemone is all good and secure uh, while you're turning on the flow, just so if it does end up like reatta or not reattaching but unattaching to the rock, you can like quickly turn off the flow. So, yeah. Alrighty, so it's been about two hours and it's time to add the wrasse in the tank. And this is a special moment because, again, been a year since I've added a saltwater fish to this tank so hopefully adding this fish will go well and uh, he'll be a new loved resident of this tank so he's probably gonna start hiding um, for a while and I probably won't see him uh, for I don't know probably a couple of days or something oh there he goes in his hole so he's just gonna be chilling out in that hole and yeah that's pretty much uh the end of the video and i hope you enjoyed it this is kind of like a longer video 12 minutes but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video it was fun to make and yeah i'll see you with the update on another tank